Uh, we've been in a bit of a Christmas movie kick, Will. And I know you saw this one uh, a little bit more recently than me. I saw this about a week ago. This is a new Disney Christmas comedy with uh, some fantasy and adventure as well, I think it's fair to say. Mm. Directed and written by Mark Lawrence. And, oh boy, what what, what to say? Uh, this is Disney Plus, forgot to mention. Yeah. Well, this is, this is a movie that got delayed. This is a Christmas movie that did get delayed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> maybe it this was, was going to be, of. well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, this was supposed to come out, I think, last year. Mm. Um, I know it was like, I think this one's on the, like, I feel like it was filmed in like 2017, if I remember correctly. And then it like, kind of had like, it was like kind of wavering on the calendar for Disney for a little bit. And then when they reaffirmed, they announced their plans for Disney Plus, they're like, hey, Noel's going to be on there. And it's just like, oh, okay. Um, I don't think that's the case because they didn't start filming it until, um, oh wait, no, you're probably right. I think you're right. You're right. Cause they were... F- they were filming it yeah. like January 2018, so it would have been ready by um, the winter of 2018, so or like December 2018. So you're right. Yeah. Well, it looked like yeah they were casting it in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, and then well, no, it says production began late October of 2017. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so there you go. Now what what is this what is this about? Uh, so Anna Kendrick is is in this film along with Bill Hader. Kingsley Benadir, Billy Eichner, Julie Haggerty, Shirley MacLaine, oh, the the wonderful, perfect Shirley MacLaine from one of my one of my t- my favorite films of all time, and on many other people's favorite films of all time, and she's playing an elf in this movie, and that's one of very many things that sort of uh, what took me off my feet with Noel. But Will, what is this? What is this one about? Tell the listeners. Uh, yeah, it's a fun premise. Um, it's based on the children of Santa Claus. It's a movie portrays it. Um, it's sort of a generational thing where it's not like Santa Claus has been this like ever living being mm-hmm. throughout time. He, it's like a like generational. It's a monarchy. Yeah, it's like a monarchy kind of thing where it's like passed down, uh, you know, generation by generation. The one Santa passes, and then the son kind of takes over. And I believe it's like twenty seventh or something like that. When- uh, I think it's like twenty fourth. Because I remember it was like, oh, I think it's trying to go with like Christmas Eve. and Oh, yeah. good catch. Good catch. Um, Only yeah, reason are, I remember. There's a lot of Christmas puns in this and they're not subtle. So that, that would make sense. What did um, she say? It's like, oh, my garland. So there's a lot of them. I, oh, I, I, we could we could spend this whole episode talking about them. I'd rather That's not. fine. That's fine. Uh, well, <laughs> all I care about is you will not besmirch snow cone. I'm you can make to. you can make fun of anything in this this movie. You can you can throw reindeer reindeer poop at any of any of these aspects of this film but if you say one negative thing about snow cone cinema hawks is done it's over sure. i mean i have nothing against snow cone i think it's a it's a lovely little thing then, and all right it, then you it, have nothing it, against it, me and if anything the movie would have been improved with more snow cone probably. there literally was one part of the movie where i was just like snow cone she needs snow cone to help yeah um but let me i was just gonna say so the plot is based on Noel Kringle and Nick Kringle, who are like the kids, the, the newest kids of Santa Claus. But he's not Claus. quite Saint Nick Kringle, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, well, yeah, basically, they kind of confirm early on that Santa is a big old sexist, and he's like, you know, the, the sun is going to be the new <laughs> Santa Claus, and you're this here to spread uh, Christmas cheer. And, big you know, old sexist uh, Chris Kringle, that's right. Yeah. And uh, eventually uh, the patriarchy gets taken down in, in North Pole and uh, all that jazz. But uh, before that, um, we get a little like adventure where we see Nick Kringle is kind of having an existential crisis where he is uh, taking over Christmas for the first time. Uh, he's not really adapting to it. He doesn't really have the, the chutzpah for it. And uh, Noel was like, hey, you should take the weekend off to kind of like get your mind off things for a little bit. Go to one of these vacation destinations. And he goes to Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, he is just absent. Uh, and everything is in disarray in the North Pole. Noel sneaks out with the reindeer to try to find him. And in doing so, there's some uh, fish out of water comedy that is uh, not unlike Elf. Yeah, there, there's like, altogether. yeah, there's maybe three or four scenes that are riffing off of Elf, but it, it, it wasn't too bad, right? Like there weren't, it's not like that's what the whole central premise no, of the movie was. I mean, I feel like by design, this is more like the Santa Claus sequels than Elf in terms of like tone and look and design. Mm, yeah. 
Kind of. I think like one interest, one thing they kind of introduced to this is that apparently the North Pole is mostly filled with humans, right? So there's like a whole yeah. North Pole of human beings that can mate with each other to produce right. offspring that becomes yeah. Santa. Mm. And they're all just sort of, they're not elves, they're just people. And But there are elves. Uh, surely there are elves elf. too, but... They're, they sort of are like the only difference between them, it seems, and the other and the humans are their ears. It's never established. Right. Lore is not what you're getting if you're getting, if you're curious about Noel. It is a very like hamstrung movie here. Yeah. Can, I, can I say though sure. the things I liked about this? Okay, Billy Eichner. Anna Kendrick. Okay, yeah, Billy Eichner. Sure. Billy Eichner gets to be a tech support Santa in this movie, who mm-hmm. creates an algorithm and gets a few one liners here. At the expense of some of the other uh, characters in this film, I appreciated that. And I appreciated Anna Kendrick. I mean, she can sell goofy, silly Mm -hmm. nonsense without, you know, being insufferable. I think, like, Mm -hmm. if this hadn't been casted quite right, if this had been, for example, Bella Thorne, I would not have finished this. I wouldn't have kept going. But because Anna Kendrick is so gosh darn lovable and charming without really having to try that hard or make Mm -hmm. it seem at least that she's not trying hard, I was able to enjoy this, even though... Bill Hader is barely in it. Sort of false advertising, right? He's he's in it more than I anticipated, but not as much, I think, as people are going to expect. Why didn't you think he... Why was it more than you anticipated? Because I thought, because this poster has both of them on it, that I was like, it's about them. It's not. He's he's maybe in less than a third of the film. I mean, I figured he's on the poster because Bill Hader is hot right now, and that's what gets the clicks. Oh, he's, I knew, he's like, hot all him the time, being, Will Ash. But with him being absent... Like, I figured that he was going to be gone for, like, at least the whole second half of the movie. That's why I was surprised that they brought him back in the second half. I'll just say, I mean, yeah, like you were saying, I don't know if there's really too much that should be said or really a, a pertinent need to dive too deep into Noel. I mean, it's a Disney Plus film. Uh, it was going to be in theaters, and you can kind of tell, except for the special effects, that they yeah, had there was some, like, money put rough, into this. Pretty rough around the edges. It, yeah. it, to me, it felt Probably like unfinished. It, yeah, it to me it felt like a Disney Channel original movie with like a slightly better budget, mm. but it really is that sort of like content, maybe freeform, like you were sort of yeah. referring to earlier. Right. Uh, it's not funny, right? Yes. There, there's no. There's like one. No there's one joke that made me laugh. Oh, the lucky? rest are like, was it? You're very lucky. I don't. I don't think I laughed oh. once. I, the, actually, no, that's false. I did laugh, and it was a Billy Eichner line. Okay. Had to do with a gavel. I mean. There was one joke, and it's towards the end, so I won't give it away, but it generally caught me off guard, and it made me laugh. I thought it was a good joke. Mm. Uh, everything else was like, yeah, Billy Eichner had a couple like chuckle-worthy stuff, but yeah, most of it's just not very funny. Yeah. And it does. it is one of those films that takes so long to get to the very obvious thing. <laughs> where You're just like, mm-hmm. why, is, why is this movie taking so long to introduce the most obvious resolution? Like, it's too obvious. Like, yes. It's just... Yeah. It, yeah, it, this this movie is a bit of a weird tease, and but as as far as like comfortable bubblegum Christmas Hallmark movie content goes, I'd say it's better than a bunch of the other ones, right? Like it's better than another one we'll talk about soon. That's for sure. Uh, that mm-hmm. is a Netflix Christmas movie. But in terms of like really good Christmas movies that we've seen on streaming platforms. Like there's not a long list. I'll give you that, but yeah. Klaus still one of my favorite movies of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, no comparison that, that is, if you, if you have to look at Disney plus or Netflix movies that are good for the family and are Christmassy, please watch Klaus skip this, this, this just, this is like for playing in the background, like while you're cooking or baking Christmas cookies or something like that. You know, or folding your Christmas sweater and ironing it or whatever you do with your sweaters. Uh, this this is not a movie to, like, sit back and try to analyze, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where I remember when it was announced, it was on Disney Plus, that was kind of sad because it was like, oh, Disney is, like, throwing all their middle budget movies onto their streaming service. It seems like they just only want their bigger movies to play in theaters. Unless it's, like, the documentary stuff that they sometimes put out on the cheap. But when they saw the movie itself, or at least even the marketing for it, it was pretty apparent. Like, oh, like this isn't this isn't anything I was going to go out of my way to see anyhow. So it's not like a big loss that didn't have a theatrical release. And with that, I mean, like like you're saying, it's it's one of those movies that if it's on 
And it's like, you know, in the Christmas season and you don't have anywhere to be and you're just like with your family, it's like fine. It 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 kind of just fills a void, I guess. But uh yeah, yeah I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like I, I think Anna Kendrick makes it go down smoother than it might have otherwise, uh, just based on her she has a lot of charisma. She's just a very appealing screen presence. And I agree with you that I think it doesn't feel insincere in a way that it might have felt forced with a lot of other performers uh, in this role. So, but with everyone else, it just felt like they're kind of on, on autopilot for most of the movie. Yeah. Uh, including Shirley MacLaine, who just feels uh. like she just kind of like was like gone vacation. Just yeah. Like, just, All right. Yeah. She's just like, Adam Sandler can do this. So can I. Right. Yeah. And it's just very strange because I mean, like, you know, she deserves it. Like, you know, she, has, she doesn't need to prove anything to me or anyone else right. for that matter. But uh, it was just kind of strange being like, well, you got her. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure she she's here for the money for the most part. But it's like you could you could give her a little more to do if, if she's willing. But I, yeah. I guess they're like, yeah, she 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 does what she needs to do. And, you know, she's getting paid. And I'm not complaining. So it's kind of nice to see her on the small screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah once again it's been a while i was trying to think yeah i was trying to think what she was in last i saw i mean I've, it has to be something before bernie but that's the main thing i remember before this uh good question i have to give that some thought bernie was like what like late 2000s so hmm was she in uh um was it secret life of walter mitty i think she was was she i think that's the last the, thing i saw her in yeah well that's still that was like 2016 no that's actually 2013. no it was, no, it was 20, 2013 you're right yeah yeah. So that was a while ago. Um oh, you know what? She was in uh, that Amanda Seyfried movie. Um the uh, I don't remember what year it came out, but it, it was only a couple of years ago. It was the it was the one where she writes the obituary and she has that line. She's like, She writes the bitch in obituary. You don't remember that? Uh is, is that the one with Ed Helms? No. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't remember her being in that. But uh yeah, I, I forget what it was called. It 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 was something it was it was like a Sundance film that bleaker street thought was going to be bigger <laughs> clearly it wasn't uh, i'll have to look I don't up know later if I saw this. yeah i don't know if i saw that one but um yeah again always happy to see her uh i'm not gonna delay this anymore i guess i mean the one thing i will say is that um i i do think if this had gone to theaters it probably would have been rated g um mm. i can't think of anything that's like pushing pg in this movie and i kind of appreciate it for that and that like you know we rarely you know even like movies that are designated for families tend to have Something is kind of thrown in to give it like a little bit of edge to push it to PG. And I do like that this movie is just fairly wholesome by design and not really trying to push any boundaries or anything. Just being entirely, you know, sweethearted in its design and formula. But yeah, it's just very distinctless. And it's very apparent why they just threw this on to Disney Plus. It just kind of fills it. It fills in the need for content on their service, but it's something I think anyone's going to feel compelled to like rewatch during the Christmas season. So for that, I'll give it a firm C for Christmas. I'm a <laughs> I'm a C on it as well. I give it a C for Christmas cookie because uh, I, I look at it as kind of like a, a burnt Christmas cookie where I'm like, yeah, it's decorative. It looks like a Christmas cookie, but you messed it up. <laughs> it doesn't taste very good. Anna Kendrick, it's, the milk yeah. makes it go down smoother. But I was gonna say the frosting yeah. kind of made it sweeter. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's better. But uh, yeah, I can't can't recommend it. Uh, hopefully, you can try it again. Um, the right ingredients, that's for sure. Um, well, especially with yeah. Shirley MacLaine. I mean, the premise itself is pretty good. Yeah. Like, I think it's a good idea for a movie. I just think the execution is just very. It's helpful. all execution. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. It, but it's one of those things where I think this actually will be very popular. I think a lot of people are going to watch it, especially because there isn't a lot of original programming on Disney Plus. And I think a lot of people will watch it and just sort of enjoy it passively. So I think for that, like I, I think it, it's generally fine entertainment, as you said. So I think the C rating is quite there and spot on. 